John, thank you so much for the time. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. <laughs> VP of Hardware Engineering, right? Mm -hmm. Senior Vice President of Hardware Engineering. Um, since I have you for a, a couple of minutes, I needed to ask about hardware because it's been a big year for hardware. It has. From the iPhones, the new iPhone Air, the Pros uh, redesigned, and the AirPods that I'll get into a little bit. Might be my favorite thing of the event. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> But starting with the incredible iPhone Air, I, I, I loved it. Cool. It, uh, I, once I grabbed it and I saw how thin it is, yeah. it, it not only looks like it, but feels like the future. Awesome. Like you're grabbing something so futuristic, it, it's so cool. That's been such a consistent response is like every time a person picks it up for the first time, it's just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, like it's crazy to see it on video and the finger with the, yeah. but then you grab it and it's a whole other yeah. sensation. Yeah. I wanted to ask, what was the most difficult thing about doing the thinnest iPhone ever? Well, I mean, it was packing it all in there, right? I think, uh, you know, th this this product represents the culmination of many, many, many years of work as we've been, you know, developing more and more core technologies internally, right? When you think about Apple Silicon and there's the focus on efficiency that Johnny's team has, and of course we've been doing that for the SOC, and then we added, this, now in this case, the C1X modem, and we've got N1, our, our, and so by building that and really optimizing effic for efficiency, we could, It enables a completely new kind of product, right? And then, of course, you know, we, we've got this plateau on the top in the ceramic shield, and we had to to make the product the way we wanted it. We had to figure out how much could we cram into there, right? And so we have the most densely packed main logic board we've ever had on a phone. We've got the cameras up there. We had to repackage the cameras so that they could fit up there. All that Apple Silicon, which then leaves all that extra space for battery. And it has mm -hmm. great battery life. And so I think it's all of these things coming together. It took years and years of work and, and kind of learning and growth across generations of phones to finally have the building blocks to be able to make a product like this. So the, the camera plateau uh, design-wise specifically is just to cram more things in there? Yeah, I mean, it's a key part of it. What's interesting is it's, um, as you saw in the video, it's actually machined out, it's precision milled on the inside as well. So it's actually a hollow plateau. It's not just mm -hmm. an extra thick you know, piece of ceramic shield. And that allowed us to kind of put more of the components in there. So if you saw in the picture, it's just a huge battery that runs almost the, the rest of the length of the phone. That, that's so cool. It, it's so nice to see like a new iPhone model. Cause we, yeah. We've been accustomed to you know, the, the regular iPhones and the pros and having something completely new. Uh, I also noticed it's named iPhone Air, not 17 Air, so I've been making that mistake, oh, which I yeah. find uh, <laughs> really, really interesting. Um, and I, I, I usually, because I, I, I've had the chance to talk to software people and hardware people, and I, I always know uh, there's this sort of clash between designers and hardware specialists. Um, you need to make the phones better, but you also need to make them look better. Uh -huh. So I wanted to ask, um, how do you strike that balance? So what went into changing the design for the pros specifically? And like, hey, we, we want to do all this cool stuff, but we also need it to look cool. So how do you go about those decisions? Yeah, it's funny. I never think of it as being a clash between like the, the hardware team and the design team. I think it's because it's one of the things that makes Apple special is that everyone here has a deep appreciation for design and how important it is. Uh, and, and how much value it brings to our products and, and, and how much it brightens kind of people's lives. And so we go into it together with the studio. From the very beginning, we're thinking about the product together, right? The engineering side and the design side and, you know, ideas going back and forth and how do we optimize this and how do we push on this and is there any way we could make this a little bit thinner or is there any way we could, mm. you know, make this a little little different? And, and it's a very collaborative process that feels really good because in the end, you know, if you just left engineers to themselves, they would build something very functional, but maybe not beautiful. There's a yeah. lot, there's, it's very special when you can build something that's so capable and so beautiful, yeah. It, it, it's a great balance. Um, I'm sure everyone has their own opinions on, on the new design. That's what, um, that's what good design does. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I, I think one of those uh, topics specifically is the change from titanium back to aluminum. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the, the whole unibody design and the video was, was great, but I'm sure there's going to be some headlines like, hey, why did you go back to aluminum? Wasn't titanium a bit more premium feeling? Um, I know there's thermal advantages and it's lighter, but were, I don't know, were you a little bit afraid of the pushback of going back to... I don't think so. I mean, like you said, design is always, you know, people, there's always opinions on design, which is a wonderful thing. But I think we try to approach things with what is the best 
you know, material for the job? What is the best material for the application? And it was really obvious from the very beginning that aluminum was the right material to use for this product. And, and you touched on kind of the two key reasons. One of them is, as, as we created this new product category with iPhone Air, we wanted to make the Pro even more Pro. We wanted to push on it. And one way to do that is to make it even more performant, right? And so if you want more performance, you gotta have great thermals. And our custom alloy for aluminum, it has 20 times the thermal conductivity as the titanium we're using. Okay. So <laughs> that's a really, really big enabler, Yeah, that's right? significant. And, uh -huh. and as you mentioned, you know, aluminum is, has a lower density than titanium. So in the same form factor, it ends up being quite a bit lighter. And when you make it lighter, well, then that allows us to, hey, let's push more battery in there and things like that. So, if you know, I don't think this product would have been possible. I know this product wouldn't have been possible the way it is if we had tried to use titanium. We think aluminum is absolutely the best, was the best option. And it, and it feels great. I had a chance to try them on at the, yeah. at the hands-on after the event, and it... I mean, to people saying it's not that, it feels premium. Like, I, I, I love the feel. It definitely and, feels premium. And, and yeah. one of the other options is with, with the anodized aluminum, we could do this cosmic orange, which I love, and I can tell from the hands-on area, is a huge hit. Yes, it's my personal <laughs> yeah. favorite as well. I've been waiting for orange forever. So to, there you finally, go. to finally get it, <laughs> it's awesome. We made it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, just to s switch a little bit gears to the AirPods, mm -hmm. Um, I think everyone lo loves talking about the iPhones, but the AirPods, I think it's an amazing upgrade. Yeah. Um, everything, like just kept piling on a better ANC, which I don't even understand how you can have 4X better performance if it's already just wait till you try. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. I think I have a demo <laughs> later on, good, I'll try good, it out. Um, but what I wanted to ask about the AirPods is, uh, how do you design the world's most popular headphones to fit Everybody, because you I, you mentioned a couple of things in the in the keynote about making them a little bit smaller and the design changed slightly. Because uh -huh. um, there, I mean, there's millions and millions of people using this. So how, how do you go about doing that? I mean, honestly, that's I mean, there's many challenges in building great AirPods, but that's one of the biggest ones because uh, everybody's ears are different. Ears are like fingerprints; like no two ears are the same. And and if you if you look at all the data, the variation between the biggest ears and the smallest ears, and it, 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 it's, it's huge. And so it's a really hard problem to try to design a product to cover that much range, right? Mm -hmm. And so we put in a lot of work. As, as you heard in the keynote, you know, we scan, we do 3D scans of thousands upon thousands of ears. So we just have a huge library of different ear shapes and sizes and all of that. Uh, we do a ton of user studies. So a lot of, as we're building models, you know, we're trying them with, with a lot of people. And you know we learned some things from all that data, making them a little bit smaller, as Kate said in the in the keynote. Also, there's a change in the angle of the ear tip that actually okay. kind of better matches the broader distribution of people's um, kind of actual ear geometry, right? Mm -hmm. And so when all those things come together, what we've achieved is I keep looking at phones, but these <laughs> are uh, what we've achieved is. Uh, you know, something that has the, the broadest fit coverage that we've had for AirPods Pro, which is really great. And the stability is really good. Like that's been one of the okay. most common points of feedback in our testing is how stable they feel in the ears for you know, people who like to exercise with them and they, they really lock in. So I think people are gonna be really happy with them. I can't wait to, to try them out. I love my AirPods Pro 2 and it seems that every aspect is better. So I'm just- That was the goal. It was like take yeah. every single thing that everyone loves about this product and make it better. And I, I think we've achieved that. Yeah, the, the, they uh, physically they look similar. They do, yeah. but I think it, it's our job to actually tell people like, no, this this really yeah. is something else, like a whole new um, generation. And I also noticed the uh, new foam tips. Uh -huh. What was the the decision behind doing something other than? Silicon, I think it's the... Well, little. yeah, so, so, so we've always had silicone ear tips, which are really good from a fit and comfort standpoint. Uh, foam offers um, good passive attenuation, but if you just use foam by itself, they tend, to be, they tend to break down really quickly if you just kind of have exposed foam. So what we did is we actually injected foam inside the silicone tips. So the part that touches oh. your ears is still silicone, but there's foam embedded kind of behind it. And so that oh, brings okay. down the passive attenuation, so the amount of noise that's coming through just by them being in your ears. And so that combined with the algorithm, with the algorithmic improvements and the kind of other design improvements led to this huge leap forward in ANC. Okay, I didn't know the phone was inside and then silicon on the outside. Yeah. That, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that is good. I'm talking to you, I'm learning. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't wait to try them out. Also, um, one final question I had is uh, of the products that 
we saw today, Apple Watch included, and the iPhones and the AirPods. I mean, they're all uh, really great updates, but w uh, you're personally working, I'm sure, a couple of years back. Which is your favorite that you finally got to unveil to the world? <laughs> I try not to pick favorites, but I, I think I think this moment of being able to introduce a completely new iPhone lineup, right? Something we've been thinking about for a while, which has allowed us, like I said, the, the existence of the iPhone Air and our ability to make that has allowed us to push the iPhone Pro to be even more pro. Mm -hmm. And I think just being able to do that thing as we've been thinking about for a while, obviously we, we work on these for a long time and I think it's been really exciting today to see people's reaction and see, you know, some people are like, that's the one I want. And other people are like, no, I want that one. And that's great. Like there's something for everybody. It, it definitely creates more um, debate, especially in the iPhone line, lineup, because I'm torn between, I love the new Air, but I want all the features of the Pro. So sure. I think it's an interesting <laughs> year to, uh, to choose between the, mm -hmm. the different models. And not your favorite, but maybe which one was the toughest to 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 design the the overhaul? Uh, it's hard to say. Every product has its own challenges, challenges yeah. right? And you know, we talked about AirPods and the and the fit and finding the fit for as many people as possible is a huge challenge. Obviously, packing all that capability into iPhone Air was a huge challenge, and um, and then just pushing the limit on iPhone Pro. There were just so many challenges you faced along the way, but that's why we do what we do, and we love doing it, right? Because uh, you know, you finish, you get something you're really proud of, and you're already thinking about how can we make it better next time. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Hopefully I'll be here in a couple of years and we'll see something even <laughs> more amazing. Never know. <laughs> um, it, it, it's been great. Thank you again for, for the time to talk a little bit. Um, oh, I just you. One final question. Yeah. Um, being uh, here at Apple and having the opportunity to design these products that billions of people use um, worldwide, um, does that go into design decisions for you like um are, are like the impact that these products have i think sure. is understated yeah yeah do you take do you like take that in when you're like designing the new phone that 100 percent. yeah I, I think it's it's um it's interesting it's it's both a, a huge opportunity but it's also a huge responsibility exactly. right because yeah, we are it's a little building, bit scary yeah and and honestly you know so much of what you you know, you hear about when we talk about our our environmental work and Apple 2030, and you know, every little bit we can improve in terms of how much recycled material we're using. Mm -hmm. You know, every individual in the world can can do good things for the planet and have an impact by recycling or maybe not using as much, but it's pretty small, right? The amazing thing about being here is engineers can have a massive impact, right? If they can wow. come up with an idea that saves, you know. 10% of the material here or uses less energy there, that can have a really profound impact. So it's, it's um, like I said, it, it's a really fun and exciting thing, but mm -hmm. it's also, yeah, in a, in a way, it's like, yes, this is our responsibility to take this seriously. That's so cool. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I mean, 10% more uh, recyclable material Makes multiplicated by the billions of iPhones or millions of iPhones, <laughs> it's, it's a big impact. Yeah. That's so cool. It's, it's a really cool job you have. Uh, th thank you for, for the time again, John. And thank you. If you. Do you speak a little Spanish or not Sadly, at all? Sadly, I don't. <laughs> no, you don't? I do not, Just say, hola, Mexico, to my guys down in Mexico. You hola, good? Mexico, to my guys down in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, John. Thank you so thank much. You.